Welcome everyone. This video is going to be the termination of this little lighting circuit. It's been running for a total of 275 days. It is still running. It is very, very dim and um, really for the health of the batteries sh should be stopped. So that's what we're about to do. Uh, I'll just turn off that light to show you the remaining light. Um, so it's gotten quite dim. As I said, 270 days now since it was uh, last recharged. And the batteries have just been swapped over every so often. Um, as you can see here, and then I just gave up on it. Uh, after 123 days and left it for uh, I don't know how long now but anyway 270 days um, and that's where we're at so what I'll do now is I'll uh, disconnect these batteries we can see that light go out for the last time and um, it's been great little light to have to be honest like just lighten up the side of the wall down my hallway and providing me uh, just enough light to see where I'm going without smacking into any walls and um, yeah it's been great so this is it done disconnected and what I'll do now is I'll take those batteries and I will place them uh, on charge or one side at least, the, the primary side, and um, I don't know, connect it back up, I might solder up the connection to properly this time and connect it back up, so now what we'll do is, um, now that that's been terminated, we can move on to um, discovering why this circuit might be so efficient, so I will now switch to uh, a demonstration where we measure uh, using the same batteries, same style of batteries, same manufacturer. Uh, we'll measure the uh, amperage between systems. So this is what uh, the battery looks like after a recharge, or sorry, the light looks like after uh, a recharge, so 275 days. And I'll put a still shot of these two side by side so they can be compared of uh, prior to taking the battery out and after charging. So that's... Um, considerably brighter so yeah back for another 200 plus days all right now we'll um, move on to uh, the amperage tests So in an effort to try to understand why the system that uh, was just terminated, um, why it's so efficient, I uh, set up these two meters, um, one coming from the three AA batteries in series and giving us 3.6 volts and it goes into this meter here. Uh, it's a bit hard to get everything on screen, but look, this is so easily replicatable that um, you're, you would, would be feel foolish if you thought that I was trying to trick you here. You can just easily just copy what I'm doing and just see it for yourself. So I'm just pointing this out because I need to answer these questions for myself. It's more about you know, l learning for me rather than uh, proving anything to anyone. 
all right so um we've got our three three batteries in series 3.6 volts that runs into this meter set at 200 milliamp uh, gauge that runs into the load um, out of the load into this meter set at the same 200 milliamp gauge and then this meter runs back and is connected to the base of the uh, series bank of batteries so we're just going to leave that sitting there so that's easily obvious and easy to understand so we'll put this battery in now and we'll be able to see what the um, load is taking what's being put back and what's the difference okay so there's our light uh, shows the fluctuation might be due to poor contact there with that alligator kip all right that's sort of that okay so now we've got um, your 90 mm, okay this still could be that fluctuation there and just double check the other one okay so it seems to sit a bit more stable now so i mean you will expect uh there's a fluctuation in amperage as the voltage in these uh, series bank of batteries is being reduced that will naturally just increase amperage so um, as the voltage drops the amperage increases so we can see now that we've got 70 uh so we've got 86 milliamps coming out of the batteries 86.5 and 78.8 .8 coming out of the load so you know easy calculations and that may be um fluctuating again due to a poor connection there but you know if you if you soldered this up have a really rock solid connection secure connection you don't have to stress about uh, the indiscrepancies of um, fluctuating of values once you've made your connection solid and you leave it alone don't play with it then you'll know um, you know and that seems to be solid there now so 94.6 out of the batteries and 86.2 back into the batteries so you know there's and when I show you the uh, which we're going to go to now I'm going to reconfigure this so that we've got an extra meter in play um, and this extra meter will show us what um, moves between the battery banks when using the Tesla switch style uh, operation so light's pretty much the same um, as what it is when it operates on the Tesla switch. That's three LEDs. Um, you know they are rated at 20 MA, and the so that would give us what 60 with three, and perhaps the extra. Uh, amperage there is due to 3.6 volts instead of the 3.2 volts that these are rated at um, yeah that's the only explanation I can come up for that either that or they're they're rated uh, inefficiently so that they are rated so that they are stated that they consume less power when they actually consume more than that I mean, it wouldn't be the first time a company sort of fudged the numbers a bit just to impress us all. Okay, um, on to the Tesla switch battery arrangement. So we've just seen the effect of having these three um, series connected batteries producing 3.6 volts. Um, and you know how bright that makes the um, three LEDs with um, the input meter to the LEDs and then the output meter 
from the LEDs uh, running back into the same series batteries um, and you can see you've seen the um, the amperage uh, that that requires or normally expends from those batteries um, input and output so now what this is going to demonstrate this is using the primary basics of the Tesla switch so it's just the battery sets themselves there's obviously no switching mechanism here so we've got the same thing as we had before we've got input to the load and output from the load so and in that way this will help us uh, understand how much the load actually is consuming and then this extra meter here is going to show us the transfer amperage between the parallel batteries um, after the load and then they're connected uh, for this test i have got them connected across the two positives of the battery you can see on the right hand top of the screen got this one is connected to the parallel set and uh, on this side this meter is connected to the series set and that's running obviously through the load and through the two meters so we can see what's going into the load what's coming out of the load and then this one's going to show us uh, what's being transferred between the two banks because um, it's not been making sense to me how efficient this is and so this will just help document uh, one of the reasons why I think this might be uh, a good performer so there's our uh, lights running again so I'll just turn that off so we can see uh, just how bright that is that's three LEDs that are supposed to be rated at 3.2 volts and have a consumption uh, of 20 milliamps per LED so you know either they're not rated correctly or they're burning way too much um, possibly the the higher um, values that we saw just when connected to the series bank uh, is due to 3.6 volts in that bank when these are 3.2 operational uh, LED so but even with that in mind so now we see coming out of the primary battery bank we have 14.6 milliamps um, coming out of the load so that's going into the load then coming out of the load is 13.2 milliamps and then between the two banks is 14.1 uh, I'll turn these lights on so make it a tiny bit easier to see so what I'm confused with here, and I've tested this with other meters, I, I bought like a heap of these cheap meters because I'm sick of blowing them up. So don't come at me with saying, no, oh, you're getting errors because of your expensive meters. I had expensive meters. I blew them up on other things. I also tested uh, this system with expensive meters and I get the same result. So it's not the meters. What I don't understand is 14.4 milliamps coming out of the primary battery. Only 13.1 milliamps is coming out of the load, which this is normal. You, you would expect that. You're going to have your load wasting some of that energy as heat. But what's going on here? 13.8 milliamps that's between the two battery banks now that's just got me confused so I don't know um, maybe people can do some tests and confirm what I'm seeing here um, that I haven't made an error here now I'm perfectly okay with making errors that's uh, my human human right to make mistakes um, but uh, my eyes are uh, 
seeing something here that I can't quite explain. Not to mention um, the evidence here that this points out, uh, you know, how just how efficient um, this system is to be operating at a, at 14.3 uh draw to run the same lights as we just saw before uh, consumes a lot more when connected in series all right well thanks for watching keep the comments coming um you know i really need uh smarter minds perhaps on this to um get the answers that i'm looking for and um yeah i i, I won't chew you out for having a different opinion uh, I'll happily consider your comments and suggestions and um, you know for those who are um, probably doubting it straight off the bat maybe you could have a look at this and uh, give me an explanation as to what's going on here um, as we saw you know as I showed at the start of this uh, video um, the uh, shutdown of um, the system that's been running for so long so hundreds and hundreds of days all right thanks everyone for watching please like share and subscribe um the most important one to me is that you share this um you know it's great that you and i now know this but other people i think can benefit other people could probably take this further uh, we've got to show this to as many people as we can that there are better ways to use energy than what we are currently uh, educated on. Thanks. Have a nice day.